Hello, my name is Shaker Dukapati, and I am an MD-PhD student at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Today I'd like to speak to you a little bit about our work in developmental medicine and child neurology entitled Linking Corticospinal Tract Activation and Upper Limb Motor Control in Adults with Cerebral Palsy. This work was performed at the Institute for Human Neuroscience at Boys Town National Research Hospital in Omaha, Nebraska. Just to give a little background, there is a growing awareness that the developmental insults that contribute to impairment in people living with cerebral palsy may actually have cascading effects that alter the pathways that connect the brain and the spinal cord. It's been suggested that the connections between the brain and the spinal cord are reduced in people with cerebral palsy. However, we don't know if this is due primarily due to changes in the brain itself, in the, uh, particularly in the cortical regions, or if these changes are present further down in the spinal cord, particularly at the terminations of these pathways at the spinal levels or in the spinal neurons themselves as they receive this information from the brain. So in this study, we are quantifying the connections between the brain and the spinal cord using a particular type of physiological response called the cervical medullary motor evoked potential or CMEPS at the sp cervical spinal cord level in adults with cerebral palsy. We're also seeing if these alt responses are linked with upper extremity motor function in this population. In this study, we worked with adults with cerebral palsy from both um, a unilateral and bilateral clinical presentation and across a wide range of function with using the MACS scale. So in this study, this cross-sectional study consisted of adults with cerebral palsy with a mean age of 33 years, five months across MACS levels one through four as well as neurotypical adults mean it with a mean age of 30 years and 10 months. So for the methodology, we are stimulating the pathways connecting the sensory motor cord disease with the spinal cord. And particularly, we're stimulating at the cervical medullary junction or the place where the pathways emerge out of the brain and into the spinal cord. We're using electrical stimulation and recording our responses using an EMG sensor placed on the contralateral flexor carpi radialis muscle for testing wrist flexion. We also quantify upper extremity motor function using the box and blocks test of manual dexterity as well as the Purdue pegboard testing. We also looked at upper limb motor control using the test of arm selective control. And finally, we utilize the Neuro Quality of Life Upper Extremity Function Scale, particularly in participants with cerebral palsy, to evaluate um, and survey uh, self-reported motor function. So what did we observe from the study? We saw that the spinal CMAP responses were diminished at higher stimulation levels in adults with cerebral palsy. That is, when we increase the intensity of the electrical stimulation to activate these pathways in adults with cerebral palsy, we observed that those responses were diminished, suggesting that these pathways at higher stimulation intensities or higher activation levels are affected in adults with cerebral palsy. We also observed that these changes were linked to differences in upper limb function, such that those individuals with greater amounts of impairment both in terms of manual dexterity and selective motor control, also had the most diminished responses in connecting the brain with the spinal cord. These suggest that these pathways may be a useful target for therapy in the adult population with cerebral palsy and provide us an impetus for further work looking at the possibilities of activating these corticospinal pathways as a therapeutic strategy in this patient population. For more information about this paper, we encourage you to read the paper and uh, feel free to email us with any questions that you might have. Thank you so much.